Welcome back. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the high frequency response for a common emitter amplifier circuit. Um, and again, that's just in general terms, um, not a particular example, so I haven't entered any values. Um, so we're just gonna come up with general expressions. But again, the important thing is that you get familiar with the process of determining you know, what are the capacitances that you need to consider, how do you calculate them, how do you calculate the thevenin resistance across those capacitances. So high frequency response for this common emitter amplifier is just uh, the same one from the previous example. Now, in order to um, consider the high frequency response, I'm going to go ahead and draw the AC equivalent circuit, uh, just so that you know we're properly ignoring the coupling and bypass capacitors, um, as well as DC sources and things like that. So let me go ahead and so this will be VS. So. You could uh, call this my high frequency equivalent circuit, I suppose. Um, then you have, so this is RS, this is the parallel combination of R1 and R2. I'm gonna combine them since they're both going to uh, signal ground. Then I have my BJT transistor. At the collector I have Resistor RC connected to ground. Um, I'm shorting through um, the coupling capacitor. This is RL. This is CL. That's V out. And then in case of my emitter, I am shorting uh, through CBE, and so it's just a direct short to ground. Uh, now let's go ahead and include the um, capacitances that are going to play a role in our high frequency response. I've already included CL. Um, and then we're going to have, I'm going to draw them in orange because uh, I'm going to be sort of modifying them a little bit later. Uh, but we have, if you remember, CBC and CBE, right? Uh, CBE is simple, it's just a capacitance between uh, the base and ground because the emitter is directly connected to ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and just replace that with CBE to ground. Now this CBC capacitance it's a feedback capacitance in this case because this is a common emitter amplifier. We're applying the input signal at the base. We're applying, we're taking the output out of the collector, and that capacitance happens to be connected between base and collector, between input and output, and is therefore a capacitance in the feedback path, uh, which is going to be affected by the Miller effect, meaning that capacitance is going to appear as um, two shunt capacitors, one at the input, one at the output, of values. The one at the input um, is going to be multiplied times the gain of the amplifier. The one at the output is going to have approximately the same value as CBC. So I'm going to split that. I'm going to call this one, uh, in order not to crowd my uh, circuit here, Miller input capacitance. And the one at the output is going to be Miller output capacitance, CM output. So I'm going to delete this one since I've replaced it. Oopsie. All right, so this will be my, uh, my high frequency equivalent uh, circuit now. And I'm in a good position to start considering uh, my high cutoff frequencies. I'm going to consider uh, first the one due to the capacitance connected to the base, and then the one, or, or the input, and then the one due to the capacitance connected at the output. Now, you may say, well, there are uh, four capacitors here, and I just noticed I uh, wrote CL as a resistor, but that's actually a capacitor. Uh, you may say there are four capacitors here, shouldn't we have four uh, high cutoff frequencies? But notice that, you know, they, they're connected in parallel with each other, so CMI is connected in parallel with CBE, so the parallel combination of the two uh, is just going to be um, equal to an equivalent capacitance of value equal to CMI plus CB. In other words, I can combine these two capacitors 
as this being one capacitor of value C M I plus C V E. And the same happens with uh, CMO and CL. I can just combine them. And the parallel combination of two capacitors, uh, the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of those capacitances. So in all reality, you can see I have um, just two capacitors. So uh, let's go ahead and consider FH1, which is going to be due to the input capacitance. So I'm just going to label it FHI for input. This is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi r 7 in i, I will call it, c i for c input, input capacitance. What I have already determined that my input capacitance is the sum of the uh, Miller input capacitance and CBE. And the Miller input capacitance is going to be equal to uh, CBC times 1 minus A. CBE are approximately equal to the absolute manual value of the gain times CBC plus CBE. And the reason for that is the gain for a common emitter amplifier is typically much larger than 1. My um, R7 input will be the equivalent resistance connected um, across the terminals of that capacitor. So if we look at our high frequency equivalent circuit here, we will see that we have R1 in parallel with R2 and all that in parallel with RS. And again, I am turning off my voltage source Vs, so that's just a short to ground. So it's basically um, R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with RS. That will be uh, the value. Oh, and uh, I'm missing one. And the one that's connected on the other side, uh, which is going to be beta times uh, little r. And now I think I've got all of them. Um, so that will be, that will give me a value for high cut of frequency FH, FHI. I can reproduce that methodology for my output capacitance and come up with another um, high cut of frequency to the output capacitance. 2 pi R7 seeing across the terminals of the output capacitance times the output capacitance, where my output capacitance is the combination of the load capacitance and the Miller output capacitance in this case, so CMO plus CL. And CMO is going to be equal to um, 1 minus 1 over A times CBC plus CL. And again, since the gain is typically much larger than one for a common emitter amplifier, we can approximate this as CBC plus CL. And now the 7 in resistance um, across the terminal of that capacitance uh, is just going to be from the, from the uh, schematic or from the drawing, uh, RL in parallel with RC. And if we want to consider little RO, it will also be in parallel with little RO. So RL in parallel with RC in parallel with little arrow. And um, then I have two values for uh, the two, uh, two frequencies where I have my two poles, the one introduced by the input capacitance, the one introduced by the output capacitance. And I can consider my overall FH to be equal to the lowest or the minimum between the two, FHI, FHO. Now, if uh, you're a little bit confused um, as to the, the process and how we came up with some of the resistances and so forth, uh, don't worry, just keep going because we're going to see several examples with actual circuits, common emitter, common base, common collector. Um, and I think that by, by doing a few of them in actual examples with actual values, uh, hopefully you'll get the hang of it. So thank you.